Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of almost all ages, with parental consent. The Sick Twisted Minds at Sacrificial Pond Productions brings you a new style of horror film, like nothing you have seen before. There are no cops, no investigations. There is no backstory, no follow-up of the victims who are brutally tortured and murdered. Our story isn't about them. Normal terror is about a single dad struggling to make ends meet. His son is his first priority. He goes to work, pays his bills, and is generally a great dad. The twist comes after he puts his son to bed. This is where he releases his stress. Some people do yoga, some hit the gym, some go for runs, some people paint on a canvas. An anonymous source once wrote on an abandoned asylum wall, I never understood people until I took one apart just to see how it worked. If you are rear-ended in traffic, most people's thought runs to anger and their primal instincts of hurting the other party. Sam Neill does not have the ability to stop that primal instinct. Let us take you into the mind of a killer. Normal Terror is a concept from the mind of Sam Mason, who wrote, directed, produced, and is starring in this new age feature film. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. Welcome to another exciting episode of Horror with Sir Sturdy. Again, I have my friend Matt with me. Matt, what's up? Not much. What's up, brother? Nothing much, man. How's everything going over there? Just started vacation, so I'm very excited. Oh, that's freaking awesome. We will talk about that in two seconds. I just want to tell everybody what movies we're reviewing today. The first movie we're doing, yes, we're doing a double feature movie. It's the first time I've done this on the podcast. And what we're going to do is review each movie. And then somehow, in our strange way, we haven't discussed this during the week at all yet, so this will be a freestyle. Try to mash them up or match them up something. I don't know yet. We'll go along as we always do. But um, anyway, the movies are My Soul to Take and Lost After Dark. So, uh, Matt, how long is your vacation and what do you have planned? Uh, My vacation will be a full week off from work. So I'll have eight days, including the weekend. Nice. And I'm going to Salem, Massachusetts for a couple days. Nice. And after that, doesn't it's sky's the limit. Stay <laughs> a staycation afterwards. I don't care. I'm not going to be at work. Nice. I'll figure it out. Okay. Now, with that being said, I got two questions for you. All right. One, I know you're going to Salem, Massachusetts. I know you're going to look at something that has horror related. Am I right? course two would you be able to record next weekend <laughs> or during the week like not too too late possibly uh during the week yes okay we'll work the weekend out. no okay we'll figure something out then so i actually have to work saturday oh okay you go oh, all right all right nice all right well we can get back to these movies and let's start with my soul to take um it was my first time watching it and IMDb, I'm not going to give, our, we're not going to do our ratings now. I'm just going to say IMDb gave this movie a 4.8 rating. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it was, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It was decent, but it was like, uh, shit, how do I explain it? This is another one of those type of movies that kind of was just all over the place. It's like To me, it started out freaking great like with the um the father how he was crazy had the multiple personalities and shit Uh and if they would have stuck with that right there and somehow had him remember when he uh had him survive that horror ordeal he went through and had him throughout the movie still killing people and they just like say nobody knew he survived i think that would have been a lot better than what they did oh yes but they like it started out high and then it went like 
on a nice decline and then like what is it plateaued and then went up a little bit and then plateaued and then just it was wavy it was <laughs> i don't know man what do you think <laughs> All right, I've seen this movie a couple times, and the first time watching it, I couldn't stand it. I'm like, it doesn't make sense. Uh, I love Wes Craven. I love what he what he does, but I think this is one of his weakest ones in his filmography. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty much the, the synopsis is, you know, the serial killer is going around. He gets into a, he gets pretty much gets busted, and uh, he es- supposedly escapes a car crash. At the same time, seven kids are born at the same time, which is weird. Mm-hmm. And uh, 16 years later, they're, like, celebrating. And supposedly it's like a coming-of-age type film for coming to an adults. And someone's, someone's picking them off one at a time. And pretty much, you, I don't know, it's just... This movie has a lot... I have a lot of issues with this film. <laughs> like, I love, the kills are pretty cool. That is true. I did like the way the uh, the killer looked. Yeah, yep, same. Thing. Um, but the main character I couldn't stand. Uh, just uh, I'll get into it later on, but uh, <laughs> when we talk more about this film, uh, they had a good synopsis going, but I think it just went wrong. Yeah, like with the um, like I was saying with how they had the guy in the the beginning, you know, the father. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh slash husband you could say how he was crazy he had like the multiple personalities and all those voices i loved that i was like this wow this is gonna be pretty good i was like i don't know what the hell matt's talking about this ain't bad so far (laughs) but they dropped the ball like after the first what 20 minutes of the movie baby Mm -hmm. it had something so good and strong and i even like the fact i know i jump around in this you know as you know i even like the fact like how you know later on in the movie that the main character is that guy's father is the kid's father and the little girl was his sister I, th- I thought that was pretty cool but i felt like there should have been some sort of more of a connection maybe at the very least say the father was crazy he did all that stuff and then maybe that passed on to both of his kids or one of them to where maybe one of them were the killers but you would think it would pass on to the daughter because the way she acted right in the beginning exactly yeah when the little girl is talking to i think the the sheriff She's like, get out of my face, like, very, very oh, she's got some tendencies. Yeah. but She just became a bitch. She did. She was mean as shit. <laughs> Holy crap. I wanted to punch her. And then, like, I felt. <laughs> I don't I don't really want to do it, but I just want No, I know what you mean. <laughs> I felt like with that movie, too, like, the kills were cool and all, but they were just, like, I felt they were kind of out of place. Like, I wish that they were getting, like, Say if they kept the same story or whatever, but I wish they kind of got stalked more, you know, like haunted. I know it's supposed to happen like on their birthday or whatever, but even if they all had dreams and were all getting maybe not stalked, stalked, but let's say they're all having dreams up to their birthday and they had to survive that day. And then after that, they'd be good. But they just kind of just threw it all together. (laughs) It's a mixed match of shit. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I got. I wish they did more with the characters, like a cool interaction. Like you start off watching it, they're having their party mm-hmm. in the the woods, and you're like, oh, okay, they're they're kind of like a bonded, but all of a sudden the one guy happens to be like this big ass douchebag. Uh, the blonde chick is just rich hoity toity, you know, yeah. doesn't care. You got the god girl and uh, the blind kid. Okay. How can a blind kid climb up a rope into a second-story facility? I was wondering the same <laughs> thing. I'm like, what the? I was like, wait a minute. He's blind. How the hell did he get up there? That's my first question. My second question is, why don't these assholes just use the fucking door? Right. Like, how hard is it to go? I understand when they went out to the little party thing, they were sneaking back in the house. But then, like, they used the window throughout the whole entire movie. Like, the one... <laughs> The one kid came over, one kid's friend, when the, um, when the main character went to the bathroom or something, he comes back to his room, he's like, how'd you get in here? He's like, with the window, how else? Like, what the, f- you couldn't use the front door? We're getting ready to go to school, what are you sneaking for? Yeah, just weird. That, that kind of bothered me right there. Like I said, I get it, the cool part is when they were sneaking in and out and stuff, I get that, I 100% get that, but the rest, 
use the door. It's there for a fucking reason. Uh-huh. And the blind kid climbing up the rope was just... Why? How? How? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it just... Uh. <laughs> I climbed the rope up the... I'm like, how? Wait, why? Like, have him climb in into a... Go through the front door. Have him being invited over. Yeah. Like, how are you gonna... He's blind. He's coming over, sneaking over. He climbs up the rope. You hear a bang, so I guess that was him falling on the floor from the window. I'm guessing. Must be. And then he ends up... I remember he ended up in the closet. Because he yes. can't remember when the one dude opened the closet. He came out of the closet. And not in that way, people. I mean, he literally came out of a closet with well, clothing. the killer put him in there because, you know, he got stabbed. Oh, and he okay. put him okay. in the closet. Okay, that's but then he was. was still alive. That's where the thud came up, and that's when the killer went, "Oh shit!" and went up, went upstairs to take care of him again, yep. realizing he was still alive. That. <laughs> it, I mean, another issue I had too was when he was washing his hands in the mirror, he sees the dead uh, religious girl. Mm-hmm. He's already looking down at the sink. He's already washing his hands. He looks up. There she is. He looks down again, and there's the knife. Now, later on in the movie, when he's talking to when the killer is revealed, he goes, well, you had time to go upstairs to kill so-and-so, then put the knife in the sink for me to see. How the hell did he get the knife in the sink when he's already looking down into it? That's a great It's like, question. no, it, there's no way, unless he threw it into the sink. But no. you, and then it just landed there quietly? <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> wow. I mean, I remember that part. I forgot about it until you mentioned that, but I remember that part now. And, like, you know you know what would have been better, too? I feel like, again, going back to the main guy, if he was the killer, because remember how he was always talking to himself, like, in different voices and all that? Mm-hmm. That would have made it perfect. I mean, it would have made it obvious in a sense, but still, it would have made it make more sense because it's like he's saying all this crazy shit. He's saying shit that people said where he wasn't even around to hear them say certain things. And yet, he's not the killer. Right. They're just showing the schizophrenia because the father had schizophrenia. Yeah. But Which, I mean, but again, using the schizophrenia, that would have made it work. It would have made it work good because it's like he has these multiple personalities. And with that, let's say, let's just say he has two personalities. Just to make this a little bit easier real quick. One of the personalities, he's a crazy ass killer the other one he's just his nice regular calm you know how he was calm self kind of uh innocent he doesn't know he has these two person i mean he knows he's schizophrenic but he doesn't know he has these personalities you know what i mean like if he's go out there killing he doesn't know about the the calm one if he's the calm one he doesn't know about the killer one but it was just <laughs> i don't know man they i don't know if it was one of these things where they tried to do too much or they didn't do enough in this movie uh, I just think they went kind of odd in some areas. Like at the end too, that when the one kid—I don't want to say it to spoil it, but oh no, go ahead. This is a spoilers. All right, fine. When his friend there is who is the killer, mm-hmm. he realizes that he has supposedly the evil soul in him, which I wish they never did that route. <laughs> and when he kills him, he goes, "Oh, I'm so glad he left." It's like, then how the hell did he get in there? Can this guy soul jump, or he just went into one particular baby? Yeah. Or just, or just have him have multiple personalities too? Have him have uh, schizophrenia? Like, it's supposed to be a ran in the family, but mm-hmm. this kid came from a beaten home. He came from a stepfather that beat him all the time. And he said he killed the stepfather. Yep. At that point. So have him have like a multiple personality too. And have him also reveal that maybe he was uh, a bastard son of the killer. Because we don't know who his real father was. Ooh. And pretty much, maybe the father was cheating. You know, the little, got a little side chick on the side. Mm-hmm. Knocked her up. And then all of a sudden, technically they're brothers. But the, the schizophrenia still runs in the family, so, kind of. I like that idea. And I just thought of another idea. Because there was seven different kids, right? Yep. Each of them... Each of those seven, that group has schizophrenia. Each of them ends up being the killers. So they're not killing each other off. They're killing other people off. 
Right. That'd be cool. But they don't reveal that till maybe like later on in the movie, later in the end. Again, like say they have the personality where they have the regular ones and the killer ones. And somehow it somehow it comes up at the end. One way or another. But I'm just saying because they you because they make it like, OK, well, the killer was, you know, the guy was killed on this birth date. These seven kids were born on this birth date. So let's make them really be a part of this not that whole party scene whatever whatever i mean you could do that if you want to but like say if they're the killers that would be cool that would have made it that would have made it better that would have made it fun but i mean it was still fun would have made it more fun but um shit <laughs> i i couldn't stand the the actor that played bug there his act uh i don't know the character just didn't seem right his the way he acted, the way he did certain things. He was a pussy, pretty much. He really was. It, that's like, wow, you're getting beat up by your sister. You don't do a damn thing. I don't understand. Why are people picking on me? You're fucking 16, dude. You, come on. Grow up. And uh, it just, all the other, even the blind kid was more tough he was. than this kid was. He, he actually was. <laughs> He actually was, which was crazy. But yeah, yeah like, I I agree with that though, because his sister beat the shit out of him. Um, and then a part that kind of bothered me too is when the the jock, you know, the cool kid, whatever. I was so happy when he got killed off, by the way. Mm -hmm. But when he um punched the one kid's friend in the stomach, that main character, and they just stood there. I'm like, okay, listen, me at that age, I'm sure you were thinking at that age, if some quote unquote jo whoever hits your best friend. You're not going to just stay in there watch him get his ass kicked. You're going to jump in there. No, you're going to jump, jump in and save him, help him out. And on top of that, your friend would probably fight back. I'm mm -hmm. just like, that's kind of... I mean, I know I know that bullying does go on, which is terrible. I know some kids don't fight back, but I still feel if there's two-on-one, usually you're going to you're gonna do something about that. You're not going to just sit there or stand there or whatever. But I could be wrong. I don't know, man. Yeah, who knows? It just seems like even all the characters... And the whole mafia, like his daughter, his sister there mm -hmm. was like a mafia actress type deal. You know, I want this person to get eight punches. I want this person oh, this. Yeah. I want this homework. I want this done. I'm like, who the hell does she think she is that she's the head honcho of the house of the whole of the, the school. school? Yeah, I see. I get the whole clicky thing. I get the whole cool click. But I feel like with that. I understand how she had the anger towards her brother, in a sense, even though it wasn't his fault. But I right. feel she should have protected him more as far as, like, you have all this power to do this, this, and this. Make sure nobody fucks with your brother and his friend, at least. Mm -hmm. At the very least. Like, I know you have your little sibling rivalry. You have your little things where you want to act cool in front of your friends. But at the, you still protect your family. Like, don't wait till the end when somebody's trying to kill you to decide you want to try to protect them. Like, you do that way beforehand. But... Again, there was, oh, man, I don't even know what to say about this one. Yeah, it's 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 kind of entertaining, but it's also kind of annoying at the same time. Like, you can sit and watch it, but you're going to be like, oh, fuck, why am I watching this? Oh, I like this scene. No, no, I don't like this movie anymore. Okay, now I kind of <laughs> like it. Uh, yeah, it was. It's, it's hard. It was. It's not one of his good films. See, I didn't hate it though. Like, I kind of liked it. I did like it. I enjoyed it. And um, I just wish that uh, I don't know. I, like I said, I just wish they had like more, more depth to it. And just I don't know. Either either with the seven kids being the killers, the siblings being the killers, or the brother being the killer, or the father never even dying and just kind of like say he was gone for those sixteen, seventeen years. Mm -hmm. and then comes back and starts doing his thing again, and, you know, they figure it out later on in the movie or whatever, but just, I don't know. Or just have a killer going around killing other people off, and they think that one of the seven is possessed, so they had to quarantine the whole seven of them, Ooh. where other people are getting murdered, like uh, those preppy girls. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they're getting killed off. Uh, maybe some other friends close by. That's a good and of course, idea, everything yeah. gets paired to those seven. They're like, okay, one of you has the uh, an evil soul in you. And then maybe, all right, now someone's picking off the seven to figure out, okay, Which... maybe it's, it is one of the seven. And that's when it leads into everything. That could work, too. 
That could have worked really well, actually. Or, or just had the father live, and all of a sudden he's living in the woods, and he becomes crazy. And uh, he said, you know what? After all this time, fuck it. I'm going after everybody. Yep. Oh, no. I'm starting to kill him again. Yep. <laughs> any any of that would have worked, man. Any of that would have worked for this. But, um... You want to do the rating for this movie now, or do you want to jump into the... Uh, Lost after we the, dark. We, uh, we can do the ratings for this one. Okay. Well, I'm gonna let you take the take the hand the reins on this one for the rating. I'll let you go first with that. Okay. And just you know rate it. How many souls would you rate this movie, and why? <laughs> I was just thinking that how many souls. <laughs> <laughs> um, I give this movie four out of ten souls. Four out of ten souls. It has like I said, it has the the kills. It has some good. Um, unfortunately, it's CGI blood, yeah. but it has some good eh, kills here and there. The killer looked cool. I love the buzzard costume that the kid made. Mm -hmm. I thought that was cool. The condor or whatever the hell it was. That was awesome. But other, but other than that, it just falls pretty short on a lot of storyline and acting and everything. So, again, 4 out of 10. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and give this movie a 5. Point five out of ten, and the condor thing was that was an awesome scene. And speaking on that scene, remember how his, like his voice changed up and everything? How his, the whole demeanor yeah. changed? I was hoping they would have taken that somewhere else, like a little further, maybe where he would have, like say, if he would attack the bully, not throw the throw up in the poop shit, but just like attack him at some point, not maybe trying to kill him. But it didn't really look like he was trying. Like, say he had jumped on him and just started pummeling him or whatever, you know? Just because you know he didn't really like the kid and, like, his personality, you know what I mean? If he's, say, one of his personalities kind of took over with that anger and rage. Mm -hmm. And then, um, shit, man. It was, it was a fun movie overall. I don't know if I would rewatch this or not, though, honestly. I mean, for a podcast, yes. That's probably why the only reason why you watched it again was to do a podcast <laughs> yep. on it. I, I found it dirt cheap. I'm like, all right, I'll buy it. Even though I like to collect a lot of Wes Craven films. Yeah. So I'm like, eh, I probably should pick it up just because it's a Wes Craven movie, but I won't be watching it a lot. That's for sure. But I wouldn't, I don't think I'd rewatch this again and again, like I said, unless it was for a podcast. And uh, recommend, as far as recommending this movie, I would recommend it, even though I say I wouldn't rewatch it. I would recommend it because it wasn't horrible. I've seen a whole lot worse, and shit, somebody might get a different take out of this movie. Like I always say, someone might like this way more than we do, or way less. You never know. I actually know someone who does like this movie a lot, and him and I argue on it. <laughs> My wife actually like she enjoyed this movie a lot. We watched it the other night. She really liked it. She liked this one better than the other one, honestly. Really? Yeah. But she's more into the, like, um, supernatural type of movies, so to speak, more than a slasher. I'm, I'm, slasher's my favorite genre. Hands down my favorite genre when it comes to horror. But I, like, yeah, she really enjoyed it. So, with that being said, we can jump into the other movie. And, um, so let's jump into Lost After Dark, which this movie was a fun movie. Also, some really good kills. There were some faults to it, of course, but uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, it was a fun movie overall. Um, pretty much, the teens they're sneaking out of their prom to go hang out. They they plan on going to hang out in a cabin, which I mean that's normal. Teens do shit like that all the time, and. Uh, they don't end up at the cabin they want to end up at. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was the family? Yeah, the Judds? Joids? Ah, uh, shit. It was like J-U-A-D, I believe. I think so. But, yeah, they end up there. And you don't want Joe, to... Joe. J-O-A-D. Joe. Joe. There we go. So, um, what did you feel about... How did you feel about this one? I like this one a lot better. And I like how the... They, uh, they steal a bus. They actually get on, instead of, you know, getting into a car and everything, they, steal, they decide yes. to just hijack and steal a bus. 
Which and you kind of kind of group of. Not everybody will get along kind of group together, mm -hmm. but they get along. You have the big dorky kid. You got the preppy guy with the preppy girl. Uh, I love the black guy with the, the afro. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, like, this is a huge uh, homage to the 80s. So you got all the different Hades, 80s haircuts, style, clothing, and everything. So that was pretty cool. And then, of course, they're, the bus I think either breaks down or ran out of gas. And they're, like, picking on them going, well, I just picked a bus, damn it. I didn't exactly know which bus to grab. Yep, yep. Well, no, he said you guys picked the bus. I just, um, I just jumped, you know, jumped it or whatever. But right. jumping into this real quick, like I'm gonna jump ahead in this movie a little bit. When the bus ran out of gas, everyone the two walked off to go find help or whatever, and they go to the barn. They see the car, right? They see gas in the barn. There's no gas in that tank. The little tank that they find. But I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, so you're going to use regular gas in a diesel engine bus and expect this to drive off. And I'm going to jump a little bit further real quick. When the, Remember, um, they're also in high school. They probably don't know that. They should, <laughs> though. They should. Because I have they, – the kid knew how to drive the bus. He had to have had his license. Mm -hmm. Or at least driven before. Because you can't just hop on a bus and fucking just drive it. Not, no. th not that good. Because he drove it like he – you know, I'd be mean? like, that's what he does for a living. He drove that shit. But you got that part. And then later on, when the principal comes, I'm not going to say, you know, just another thing with the gas. He comes with his 70 something Camaro and he has a gas tank in the back, you know, an extra gas thing in the back of his trunk. Because he's saying, always be prepared, ABP. And <laughs> remember how the girl grabs the gas can? And she's going mm -hmm. to fill the bus up, and I'm like, I can't, what the fuck? That's not going to help you. Good idea. I guess good because you're kind of thinking, but why not? Or she tried to take the car, but the guy stripped the thing of the car, you know, so she couldn't get it started. But I'm like, okay. He cut the wires in the car. Can you jump the car like you, like your friend jumped the bus? Because the bus still needs to be jumped. Not jumped, but you know what I mean, hot wired, sorry. The bus still needs to be hot wired because they didn't have keys for either or. <laughs> So that right there was that's like two parts that bothered me. And in this one, I like the characters in this movie better than I did in the last movie. I felt like the group kind of it was more like a high school group, you know what I mean? Like you had like you mm -hmm. said you had your your preppy kids, you had your jock, you had the black guy. <laughs> and he did not die first. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know what's funny when you say that? When I was watching cuz I just watched the last night, I was like I know he's not going to survive. As much as I'd love for him to survive, please don't let him die first. And he didn't. So I was good with that. And another thing, while we brought him up, well, <laughs> I like how his black instincts kicked in. When shit was going wrong, he took off. Like, he was good. <laughs> you don't know how hard I was laughing last night. There was a few times when they were running, and he wasn't even on camera. He was so far ahead of everybody. He was just gone. He was gone. And he, like, he was, like, picking up weapons and shit. Like, he was kind of, like, being smart. Uh, yes, he was on alert. Mm -hmm. Being smart to an extent. Because a lot of times when they're running, you know, when they get to the woods and all that, they keep running back and forth between the house and the barn, kind of, sort of. I'm like, okay, you, how many times are you guys going to do this shit before you just fucking try to find another trip? I get you're scared. Shit, I'd be scared, too. But it's like, you got to try to find a different route. That's one. And stop splitting up. Every mm -hmm. time you split up, Someone gets killed, right? It's like, you two go here, you two go here, you two go here. And another thing, real quick, and then I'll let you take over, is, like, when they split up, or when, when no, no, not even that. When somebody got killed, like, when somebody, the process of getting killed, everybody's standing there like, oh, my God, no. It's like, run. You wait till the person's done getting killed. <laughs> the dude pulls the weapon out. Then you run. No. Listen, if me and you are in a horror movie, like, right, if you see me get stabbed and you know there's nothing you can do, Take off while I'm getting stabbed. Don't you're wait. Gonna till a, you're gonna see a white blur, and that's me <laughs> running. <laughs> I hope so. Don't sit there and wait. Like, oh shit, he's gone. Blah blah blah. Uh, and he's then done. I guess I will stand here and be like, uh, I guess I'm next. Yep. And then decide to run. Like, oh shit, here he comes. No. <laughs> let me trip over some random log. Or let me trip over the ground. Yes, that's another thing. Which, 
And this, but one, it's all like it's all homage to the '80s. That's a lot of the '80s horror film. A lot of slashers are. Yes. People are getting killed in front. They all split up. Someone's always falling. So yes. that always happens. It is. I will say this, and then I'll let you get it over. Take over. Sorry. I was so happy when the um, the one I don't know if you want to call him a jock or the preppy kid got <laughs> killed. I could not stand him. What was his name? Zach. Oh, what was his name? Oh shit. I think that was his name. I could not freaking stand him because he was just so like. We did it the dog and everything. It's like really. Oh yeah, when they killed the dog, the girlfriend killed her dog. First of all, Sean. Sean, that was his name. First of all, why the hell would you even bring your dog when you're when you're trying to sneak? First of all, you're you're going to a school dance, right? And from that school dance, you're sneaking off to a cabin to have, you know, alcohol and sex and all that other stuff and weed. Why would you bring your dog? Remember, you got that 80s ditzy rich girl. Got to have her dog. I guess. You got a point there. But still, it's like, Mm -hmm. if I'm going somewhere, if I'm saying I'm staying at a friend's house, well, I guess, I mean, if she maybe she usually brings her dog. I don't know. They really didn't. So I guess that kind of makes sense. But still, like. I would just let that motherfucker home because you got to think about it. It's like that's too much. You're going to the dance and you're going to so-and-so's house. Right. You got to worry about that. That's where you're supposed to be going. But you're really going to, a you know, have a nice party and all that. It's like when you're drunk and high, you're not going to be able to pay attention to your fucking dog. <laughs> like <you're, laughs> and on top of that, her boyfriend fucking can't stand the dog. It was, oh, no. man. It was funny. So I'll let you go ahead and take the handles on this one, man. What do you think? Um, I really enjoyed this film. And I was just reading some of the the trivia on it. I did not know this until just now. That every male victim is named after a slasher film director. Really? And I'm looking through going, holy shit, it's true. Because you have uh, your, the main guy, he was Toby. Toby mm-hmm. Hooper. Uh, Sean. Sean S. Cunningham. Uh, oh, wow. Wesley was uh, somebody else I forgot. Wes Craven, maybe? Wes Craven. Yeah, for Wes Craven. Duh. <laughs> and all the women are named after the final girls of different films. Wow. And I was like, really? Like, Holy shit. Heather, Heather Langer, Langenkamp, Jamie Lee Curtis, Marilyn Burns, Adrian King. I'm like, holy shit. I, I never knew that until just now. That's fucking awesome. And I'm looking up going, oh shit, it is. Adrian there. Lori for Lori Strode. Heather. It's like, damn, wow, this is actually... Wow. That's really cool. I, it was mind-blowing. I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> when we give this movie a rating, that's going to bump it up at least a point or two for me just from that information because that's fucking awesome. And I just want to throw this one thing out here, then again, I'll let you take this over. I have to make a race joke. It would have been <laughs> fucked up if they named the black guy Toby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just imagine that. Like, thinking about it, now that you told me that, and then you go through all that, I'm like, just imagine, like, Listen, sir, you're going to be Toby. Like, no. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, man. Maybe somebody else. Okay, you're Wesley. How's that? Okay. That works. But, all right, man. Go ahead. Uh, the kills are kind of in- inventive. Uh, like I said, when the, the rich guy or the preppy, annoying asshole guy gets killed. Yes. It was like some kind of weird garden tool. He's shoving in the back, and he's it's like a tiller. Oh, I and love just, that. Just just twisting through his back. I fucking love that. I was like, you're rooting for the killer because you hate this character. So like the main, the the one asshole, you want to see him get killed in a cool way, and he does. Um, I I I felt bad for the big nerdy kid mm-hmm. too because he was actually starting to find someone that she started liking him, and he started liking her, but. Then, of course, he's hung up on the side of a barn going, holy fuck, how the hell did he get that big kid up there? <laughs> he hey, did. That dude was strong, though. I got to give him that. Yep. But um, going on with that, like this movie, like I said, I really I did enjoy the characters. I didn't like the main one or not. even. You can't even say it because they were all pretty much the main characters. But I didn't like uh, the dickhead. He was because it was just he. As far as the actor, I think he did great doing being the asshole, though. Mm-hmm. But I just didn't like his character because it was, like, over the top, like, with everything. But at the same time, I'm like, these guys are in high school. This is how high school kids do act. 
And he was really, I mean, like, I enjoyed every single kill, don't get me wrong. But he was really, like, the only one I wanted to get killed off was him and the freaking principal. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else didn't really bother me too much. But I did enjoy their kills. They were fun kills. And uh, going back to the part where he got killed, you know, and they're twisting the thing in his back. The part that I thought was so hilarious leading up to this is because he was talking so tough about the killer. I'm going to fuck him up. Da, 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 da. Let me go kill this fucker. He sees his girlfriend get killed. And then when he gets out the car and the, the fucking car cover gets out of him, he's over there screaming like a little bitch. Like, help me, help me. And then he, cr <laughs> he crawled under the car. He's like, no, no, help. And I'm just like, I'm thinking, I was like, where's all this tough talk now? And that was yeah, one. It's all talk. And two, I thought it was a smart idea kind of for them hiding in the car. Because I was like, you know what? You ran, I mean, you ran into the barn, hide in the car, cover it, and just be shut the fuck up. Where he fucked up, I feel, where he got caught. They never really said it or showed, obviously. Remember when he had that bar in his hand? The little yes. bar he had? He drops that in the barn. I think it's, like, right by the car. He drops that in the barn and then gets in the car. I'm like... In these situations, when you have a weapon, you make sure you keep that shit with you all the time. You'll hold on for dear life to make sure that you got what you got. Yes. And he he didn't. He set it down. <laughs> and just fucking... I mean, I know you're scared and all, but I feel like if you're scared in a situation, you're going to make sure you fucking hold that weapon tight. Mm -hmm. And going back to the dog, we're sitting in the car. The dog starts whining. Because the dog really didn't make too much noise through this whole fucking movie. Which was pretty impressive. I mean, obviously recording the movie, I'm sure they had to stop to shut the dog up. But I'm just, it's pretty impressive, especially for a fucking small dog because they're real yappy. Uh -huh. And then it starts whining in the car, and the girl breaks the dog's neck. I'm like, that's 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 your solution? <laughs> that's your fucking solution? This is why you should have left the shit home. That's right. But, again, you know what I thought was crazy, too, actually, was... um. Shit. Why didn't they try to hotwire the car that was in the barn when Toby and the one chick went in there? They're they just probably saw a car and be like, let's, let's hotwire it. I, you did it with the bus. You might as well at least try. Yeah, I know, right? And I mean, it'll be a tight fit to fit all you guys in there, but if there's enough gas in there to get you guys back to the school, if you can get away, fuck it. Sitting on laps and everything. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I was just reading some of the quotes from the movie too and I, I remember it and I laughed my ass off it's with um, the principal there oh, man. and he goes I was a nam you sick fuck I've got chunks of guys like you in my stool I just started oh, dying my God. I was laughing at that <laughs> shit too I was I'm like, like what guy. was that why did he say that I look up at IMDB and there it is right there I'm going no way that's what he said <laughs> Robert Patrick did. I love Robert Patrick's character in this he was just a badass principal like you know strict to the point he was an asshole, but he cared because he went after to find the kids. He did. So he, he did, but he he was, like, going after them as, like, to punish them, but at the same time, he really did care. He didn't listen, though. Like, when the girl was, when he was like, where is everybody else? And she was like, they're all dead right there. I'm like, all right, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go. And he's still trying to, like, you get in the house. I'm like, no, let's leave. No, just let's leave. Let's get the fuck out of here. It's like, come on. Oh, I remember the, the another quote. Remember the, the Heather chick? I don't want to be eaten by a cannonball. <laughs> what cannonball. the fuck? A cannonball? cannonball. <laughs> it was great. It shows how ditzy she was. Always had the dog. Mm -hmm. Hoity toity. Like, you know, needs yep. the, the best looking man, you know, for her career and all that shebang. Yep. But again, I, I really enjoyed this throwback. I thought they did a great job on it. Um, impressive stuff. And there's something at the end of the credits, which I thought was pretty cool, too. So if everybody's going to go there, if we check this movie out, fast forward to the end of the credits. Oh, I did not I'm, wait till the end of the credits. Oh, you, oh, I always know. I always fast forward to the end of the credits. Always now, because you never know. Some people will put shit that, back there, but Damn. there is something at the end. You want to do a little spoiler for me? <laughs> I'll tell you afterwards. Perfect. That works. I don't, I don't, I don't want to ruin it for anybody else because those are the best things. Because when you're, you get done with the movie and you're watching the credits and all of a sudden, 
Uh oh. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You got a point there, but it's just damn. This is a fun ass podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> this movie, though, I really did enjoy this movie a lot, and I do highly recommend this movie. It was a fun movie. I don't know if this is the director's first time doing this or not. I'm going to look him up to see if he is, but I thought the director did a great job. Ian Kesser was the director. I, I, I agree. And the acting, I mean, it really wasn't too bad in this movie. I'm not saying it wasn't the last one, but I feel like I just feel like the cast was better in this movie. I felt like the acting was better. And like the relationship between the characters, like they fit together better than in the last one. Actually, this was his first long movie. He's done a couple shorts and uh, a TV movie, but this was his first film. It was a horror film, and I thought he did a great job. He did. I would love to see more from him, actually. Yeah. Um, Another slasher. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, yes. He did so good with it. Like, it could, And I don't even care if it's another slasher similar to this, like with high school kids sneaking off to go do some dumb shit. I, it works. It really works. It was... <laughs> oh, man. Mr. C, don't look at me with those big, dumb cow eyes. That was hilarious. That's when he was talking to the girl in the school, I believe. Mm-hmm. About um, what she was wearing and all this stuff, why she wasn't in the dance, and then what she was wearing. I was like, wow. He's talking to his students like this. He don't give a shit. Holy shit. Um, he's a he's a badass uh, teacher. He is. What else do you have to say about this movie, though, man? Other than that, it's it's definitely a great watch. If you're a fan of slashers, this is a definitely must watch. If you especially love '80s films, this throwback. I thought they did a great job and everything. Especially find that little tidbit information of of uh, all the male characters and the actor directors now all the females are named after all the final girls of certain movies mm -hmm. i'm like this guy knows horror he he's a fan of it which makes so he made a fan he made it and did great yes which makes this more fun to me because of that well that information you shared which is awesome but it was like <laughs> I, honestly, when I when I put this movie on, I wasn't even expecting too much out of it. Like I was like, this is gonna be. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't thinking it was gonna be bad. I wasn't really expecting much, but it definitely exceeded my expectations. And I'm just like, this movie was fun. The kills were awesome. The kills were brutal. And again, going back to when he hung on um, the big kid, Toby. What, he hung up on the barn door or whatever? I thought it was cool because you see him, like, the barbed wire and all this shit. And he was in so much pain. And he was just like, kill me. <laughs> like, kill me now, please. And the one chick that was, she she didn't like him, like, emotionally, but she liked him like a really, really good friend. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the good girl who was about to be turned bad, but she got killed before she could be bad. She's running up to go over there, and he's, he's like, it's a trap. It's a trap. And I, I knew it was a fucking trap because I'm like, <laughs> he's hanging there alive. Do not go over there. Do not run over there. Once you see that, you run in the other direction. And she ran over there and got cut in her stump, you know, stabbed right <sighs> in the stomach, which was a fucking another brutal, awesome kill. And you had the, uh, you had the one chick, which she was run, running track or whatever, right? Was she the one that was on the track? She was on a track team. Mm-hmm. And oh, fuck. What happened with her? Let's see. I'm trying to remember it. Wow. She got stuck in the bear trap. Yes, because the blonde one got killed with the car. With the car? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Stabbed through the yeah. back. And uh yeah, she was the bear trap. Which she didn't even die from that, like I watched the movie, you seen the bear trap thing, and then, like, I don't know what the hell happened. It said something with the film. Does it do that for the real movie, or was that just a fire stick thing? Can you hear me? Oh, sorry, what was that? Oh, um, with the bear trap scene, you see her get caught in the bear trap, you see the guy coming up towards her, and then it just, like, goes away. Because she, sur she survives, remember? 
Because mm-hmm. you see her later on when the one chick, oh, what the hell was her name? The other chick that was smoke that was smoking with Toby. You see her. She's running through the woods, and then she's sitting by a tree or whatever, and blood drips down on her forehead. She looks up. The other girl jumps from out of the tree, which was fucking smart, by the way. That girl hiding in the tree. Like, I think about this when I watch Friday the 13th, and a lot of these horror movies were in there in the woods, and I'm like, why doesn't anybody ever fucking just climb in a tree and just kind of sit there for a little bit and wait it out just to see what happens? I know. They did that in the, one of the Hatchet films where uh, she hides in a tree. Like, that's perfect, even though she, he never saw her. But, it, again, they hide in a tree. It's like, come on, climb a tree. Figure out how to get up there. Maybe you can hide yourself and just stay there until daytime or stay there until help arrives. I don't know. But they Use did. your surroundings. Hide. Yes. If you're in tall grass. Stay in the tall grass. Don't move. Just stay still. I agree with that. But I'm saying, like, in the tree, you're up above. Like, the guy would have to climb the tree to get to you. Unless he's going to fucking light it on fire from the bottom if he sees you. But if you're up there, quiet, not moving, nothing's falling out of the tree, you should be all right. I'm guessing. You should be all right. This guy was covering a lot of fucking ground, though. I mean, I guess he's been there for his whole fucking life, so he knows the area. Yeah, he probably knows because it's his family farm, I think it was, the the Jode family. Yeah. So, of course, he knows everything about it, so therefore, boom, I know where to hide, I know where to go. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, which I liked, I liked the whole Jode family thing, like how they talk about how they – were crazy killing people and they had a shootout with the cop you know the cops killed everybody except for one but i kind of wish that they would have went a little bit deeper not too crazy but just to figure out like how the hell did he survive you know what i mean like if there's a why did they burn the house down why didn't they blow the house up something like that like if you have a just imagine if you have like a family of say like 10 people living in one house and you know they're murderers you know like they're shooting out with the cops wouldn't you make sure that every single person is dead? <laughs> Wouldn't you, I'll, like... I'll make sure, you know, do that whole double tap thing. If the killer's dead, go there and make sure he's dead. Yes. That's what a lot of these... I, I know they don't do it a lot in the slasher films, but that's what le- reveals, like, you know, an extra kill or a jump scare. Mm-hmm. But if someone was coming after me, all right, and I, he killed all my friends and everything, and I'm the final guy, and I hit him in the head with a crowbar, and there's blood coming out, and I think he's dead... You know what? I'm mm-hmm. gonna take that motherfucking crowbar and crash it over his skull several times to make sure he's dead, dead. <laughs> I know, because you know you want to make sure. Because if not, he, they can just sit up, and all of a sudden now they're coming after you, and you're dead. Yes, yes. Like in Fender Bender, where, uh, oh wait, did you see Fender Bender? No, but go ahead with it though. Oh uh, no, cause that was the last podcast that I did with the guys. <laughs> I'm getting confused now. In this movie, Fender Bender is a slasher. Mm-hmm. Um, this girl just l- lets the guy lay there. She doesn't. She runs back into a house. I'm like, why would you run back into a house? You're making stupid decisions. Same thing with like a lot of other slasher films. If a, if you hit the slasher with say like a knife or an arrow, boom. Okay, do you think they're dead? But are they? Yep. No. You're gonna walk up close to them, look them in the eye. I'm like, really? You're gonna <laughs> stare at them and just just see if they're gonna start breathing on you or they're gonna grab you? Do something else. Make sure that yeah. my wife does the same thing. She goes, I would have ran up there and cut his head off. <laughs> yep. My like, wife pretty much does the same make... shit. Like, okay. In this movie right here, where the, um, the, I believe it's a blonde chick that survives. It is, because it happens on the bus towards the end. Remember when she stabs the guy in the leg and pulls, the, and my wife's like, she needs to pull the knife back out and keep stabbing him. Shit. <laughs> She stabs him in the leg, and she pulls... I don't know if she pulls the knife out or not, but I know she, like, double... She kicks him, and he falls off the back... Out the back door of the bus. And I'm just like, okay, well, that's cool. But my thing is, I don't remember 100%. I remember she locks the back door of the bus, because I remember she's going to try to start it up. She hears the noise in the back of the bus. The door is unlocked. She goes and locks it. And she goes... She's heading towards the front of the bus, and the guy... Okay, the guy's about to drag her off, so maybe he opened it. I was like, how the hell did that get open? But I'm I'm like, okay, that's cool, that's cool. So they do that. <clears throat> and by this time, the other girl's father shows up. He sees that the guy's a killer. She's like, shoot him. He, she, he shoots him a few times. 
but he ends up surviving. So, I gotta know what happens in this after credit scene, man. I gotta once we end this episode. I may even just fucking look it up on YouTube. I am going to ask you about that, though. But, oh, man. <laughs> just thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, that, that's interesting now, man. That that has my mind going, like, boom. Like, what's going on? Well, I'll just... Yeah. <laughs> There's... It's kind of like a reveal type mm. end. Nice. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to ruin it for people listening because... Those are the fun. Those are the fun things. You, that I know every single horror movie now. I will always fast through the credit scenes. My wife always looks at me and goes, "Like I have to know. I don't care if there's nothing at the end. I just then I know." Yes. But a lot of a lot of film directors now are actually throwing things either mid credit or end credit scenes just to like you know throw extra footage in. It's smart though. It is smart. And since what you're on disc. Fast forward, I love it. I'll just oh. when you're in the movie theater, you gotta wait for all the credits. You're like, "Where's my fast forward button?" But <laughs> here, you're watching it. You can mm-hmm. just fast forward it. If there's something at the end, great. If there isn't, well, then then you know. But it's kind of like a cool little treasure, like a little, "Ooh, I found an Easter egg," or "Ooh, I, there is something at the end of the credits. Let's see what we get." And you're either gonna be, "Ooh, maybe they open up for a sequel," or Ooh. "Ah, so maybe that person did die, or that person did live." Because I know some slashers, they'll supposedly kill somebody. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, at the end of the credit, maybe that person will wake up and be like, start slowly moving, going, fuck, where am I? And all of a sudden, end credit. And like, oh, oh that man. person did live, or maybe that person did die. Who knows? Oh, but man. after this, I'll, I'll tell you the end. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, we pretty much, I mean, is there anything else you want to say about this movie? Uh, not much, like I said. If you guys are a fan of slashers, this is definitely a must watch. Um, if you're like a, a slasher collector, this is definitely a must own. Me, I love it all all over, way better than than um, my soul to take. Mm-hmm. So when I first saw this, I thought, oh, another throwback slasher is probably gonna be bad. But as I watched it, and all of us loved it, we all were like, this is great. <laughs> now one of us hated it, which was I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed this one. Like I said, I re- I enjoyed both the movies, but I think I enjoyed this one more. Yeah, same. And it just I don't know because it it seems like it had more of a story that made sense. Like like I was saying earlier, teens do do this. They will go to a school dance, so to speak, or they will say they're staying at a friend's house and really be going somewhere else and try to have a good time. And well, in this case, it didn't end the way they wanted it to. <laughs> but uh. Shit, man. This was a good movie. This was a really good movie. Fun movie. A B movie, yeah. But a fun one. And I would love to see more from this director. I would love to see a lot more from this director, actually. Another slasher. A few more slashers from him. And shit, maybe even not necessarily this movie right here. But I'd like to see a movie where he does, like, a couple sequels to it. Just, you know, have a story going on. Like I said, maybe not this movie. Mm-hmm. But just in general. Yeah, because I could definitely tell where he took different parts of Friday the 13th in there. Mm-hmm. Like, even the way how it ended with the girl screaming. Mm-hmm. And just, it's slow motion scream, then pans, and then ends with credits. It's just like how a lot of the 80s ended, too. Like, they saw, like, maybe the killer was still alive, or they saw some onslaught or something, and then just, bam. And that's how it ended. I loved it, but, though. Oh, this was great. So we want to rate it. Yes. What do you give it, and why? Okay. For Lost After Dark, I give this one 8 out of 10 uh, slashings. Nice. Uh, great throw. I, I love 80 slashers. I try to collect as many slashers I can find, especially from the 80s. Mm-hmm. Even though if they're real bad, I still want to own them because I, I love the 80s. 80s was one of my favorite years of genre of horror. A lot of practical effects, pretty much all practical effects. I love practical effects, man. Same. And when the slashers came out, just, whoo, what's this? And a lot of the killers looked awesome. Uh, they were all not just generic, you know, just a regular guy wearing a rubber glove or a guy dressed in black. They had masks or they had some kind of costume. Mm-hmm. And they were all different, but they were fun. 
And this was definitely a good throwback to that, where they can actually go back in time to the 80s and make a great slasher. So I guess one 8 out of 10. Nice, nice. It was originally a 7.5, but then, of course, I read that little tidbit trivia. I'm going, oh, it's up. <laughs> that was awesome. I'm going, holy shit, I didn't realize that till now. <laughs> I think I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to join you with that 8 out of 10. <clears throat> nice. And I just really enjoyed the movie. I really enjoyed the kills. And it was just like, like I said, it worked. This movie actually worked. It was it was kind of simple, like obviously, like just it's a slasher film. There's teens, they're, you know, they want to party, have sex, drink, smoke, blah blah blah. But they didn't do, they didn't go like too over the top of this movie. There was one character I didn't care for too much, but I mean that happens. And you always get that one character you can't stand. I'm actually gonna for this movie because the way these characters I want to rate the characters and that, just with these characters I want to rate just the students that were in the movie mm-hmm. as far as like favorite let's do least favorite to favorite first and then from who you wish got killed off first to last and you can include the survivors but we're going to do this we'll do the students well yeah because you mainly just had the students throughout the most of the movie so we'll do the students and we'll add uh, the killer for both okay so I'll let you go ahead and go first. You give me your least favorite. I'll give you my little, like a round robin type of thing. Well, my least favorite character was, um, no, um, shit, what's his face? The asshole dude, the one that, that the dog killed, the one that was the preppy guy. I think that was Toby. Okay. No, sorry. No, no, that no. wasn't Toby. Um, Toby was the heavy set character. Yeah. Toby was the heavy set. <sighs> was it? Nope. No, Wesley. Was it Johnny? Was it either Sean or Johnny? I think it was Sean. Was the, the blonde guy? The dickhead. The dickhead. Him. I wanted, but you want the dickhead to stay around a little bit because that's the guy you're rooting for. That's the one that. Uh, all right, here we go. We fight. Got rid of that asshole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with my least favorite character was him. <laughs> you know what, man? I'm in the same boat with you. <laughs> I did not like him at all. He was just, he was just too much. Like that one guy that was just like, yo, seriously, shut up before I slap you type of deal. And he just kept going and going and going. And yeah, fuck him. (laughs) I don't like him. (laughs) And then uh, who was your second least favorite? The the annoying blonde chick, the whole couple. I just couldn't stand that couple together. I'm with you again. I'm with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Those two. Those she two wasn't... were just it's just just that annoying couple. That's like ah. But again, you kind of when you're they unfortunately you have to start killing off some characters, and you got to leave those annoying ones for a little while. Then once they get gone, you're like ah yes. It's like that. Phew. Because <laughs> you can't leave the annoying characters to be the survivors. Oh hell no. And oh, you, you I... need you need see in movies like this. Well, I guess you can say any movie, but since we're speaking horror and slasher in general, you need these. They're important characters because you need characters that you're just like, yes, they're finally gone. Get rid of them. You need that. You need a few characters that you like, maybe at least one. You need a character or two to hate. You need a character or two to love. Right. And then maybe some in between. And these two, I'll say I hated him. I didn't like her because she was just Mm -hmm. too ditzy, too stupid, like. (sighs) <sighs> the typical snotty, popular, quote unquote popular high school chick that's just thinks her shit don't stink. I'm like, you're no, knock it off. And right. it, funny thing, remember when she came out of the room of the school talking to the other chick and she was like, You're wearing that shirt, you don't have the boobs for it. I'm like, What about <laughs> you? How are you gonna make that you can't say that with you know what I mean? It'd be different if you had D's, but you had like A's yourself, so you cannot say that. And she nope. Ah, uh, her and her kill was so awesome. The way she got killed, stabbed through the back with the pitchfork in the car. Love it. And the the missing real thing did happen in in, in the Blu-ray. I just okay. remembered. Okay. It it's so supposedly technically supposed to be a lost film, so they it made it look like a, a reel was missing, and put right back together. So it was like that little 
deal, but I, I liked how they did that. I did. Yeah, I did. That's 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 the part I was talking the about. Cause that and then yeah, that's the part you know with the girl with the bear trap or whatever. So okay, after her, we have um, who's next that I like? Uh, I don't know who. Or who would you go next? As far uh, as least favorite. Least favorite, because it's kind of hard. Like. And I, actually, I got a quick question for you. With this least favorite to favorite list, uh-huh. now with the first two, are these the ones that you wish got killed off sooner, or do you just you don't have to? You could just say yes or no. You don't have to say where you'd want them to get killed off, just so I know if we can do this other part of the second. Right. Part of it. Well, the people I can stand, I want them to at least live for a little bit, so you can enjoy. Okay. Them being annoyed, but I didn't like the the girl with the leather, the leather coat, the leather like. And yep. the one I got gutted in the gut. Yeah. Yep. She was next on my list. Okay. Um. Shit. I didn't yes, mind it's... her too much, and the reason why I didn't mind her is because she was being really nice to like the outcast kid, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But then it's like the other chick. You know the one that survived later. Mm-hmm. I didn't hate her. Like the rest of the characters, I liked. So it's kind of hard for me. So I guess. Just to switch it up, I'll put the other chick first, the final girl first, before her. And then, and shit, honestly, my only reason is because I really enjoyed the rest of these characters. Like, I did not hate the rest of these characters at all. I actually liked them a lot. And like mm-hmm. I said, she was actually being real nice to the other chick. Actually, no, 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 no. Scratch that. I'm going to put the girl that got killed first here. Okay. The good girl, just because she was... Not because not she was a good kid, but she was, like, too um, unaware of a lot. I understand she lived a sheltered life and all that, but I'm like, you're 16, 17 years old. You should kind of be aware of your surroundings. Just in general, like, your surroundings a little bit more. Like, the, where she got killed with the fucking trap. That was definitely a trap. So, I'm going to put her there for that reason. And okay. And I'll let you go. Uh, my next one would have been Toby the Big Fat Guy. If if he lasted longer, maybe I liked him a little bit more. But since they killed him off pretty quick, I just felt like he was just the comic relief, the big fat kid, you know. Everyone picks on him. Everyone's laughing at him. But you do kind of feel sorry for him. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I like all these other characters. It's hard to put them. It is. So I would probably put him next, unfortunately. And see, I liked him, too. I'm going to put... Okay, now I'll do this. I'll put the one chick that I was just talking about, you know, the bear trap chick. I'll put her here. And again, my only reason, because I really enjoyed every single character with the exception of the first two. Fuck those two. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed her character. She did great. She was actually really, really smart with shit she was doing all the way up until the whole gas thing that bothered me. And um, this... I don't know. It's like I said, just she just picked the short straw. That's why she's here. Who's your next one? Uh probably the Jock character next. The one that was um kind of like the love interest a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I I understand like they want to keep the Jock around cuz he's strong and everything, but uh he could have went next for me. I'm actually going to put him there too. And it's just, at everybody, he seemed like one of the least important characters to the movie. Because he really didn't do too much, in my opinion. He really didn't have, like, a a role, role. I don't know. Like, he just, he had, obviously he had a role. He had scenes and everything. But he just didn't seem, like, that significant of as an important character. But mm-hmm. he wasn't terrible, either. He wasn't bad. He was, like, helpful. He cared. He wasn't a dickhead like the other kid was, but he was just like, eh. I mean, again, I like this character. He was all right. And I'm, I don't even know why I have him this high up on my list now that I'm talking <laughs> about him. But I'll put him there. And uh, who who's next for you? I would say I'll put the bear trap girl next. Okay. Uh, I just liked her character or whatnot, but um, I just thought she would be the next one for me on the list. And then with that being said, I'm going to put the leather chick next. Okay. And my reasoning is just, she was just nice. 
you know, she was just because the way, like I said, she treated the outcast. Mm-hmm. And I respect that because it's like, as crazy as it sounds, because it's a slasher flick, but it, it kind of it's kind of a teaching moment. If you were to like, say, if you were to just watch that scene with a kid, like, listen, see this kid that you call quote unquote call the outcast. This is how you should treat him. Ignore the weed. <laughs> just be nice to the person. I think she was just be nice to him because he had weed. <laughs> it could have been, but I mean, like. She started to talk to him more and kind of open up more. She's like, you know, she thought he was cool and something, something he did in right. school. I don't know if he came to school high and fell asleep in class or what. But she started, she was being really nice to him. She wasn't mean to him at all throughout the whole scenes they had together, even on the bus and all that. No. She just, you know, he was a, he, he was really into her. She wasn't really into him like that. She's like the other dude. But I think she was kind of falling for him some, and then they both died. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so who's your next, uh, who's left? You got two, two left. Okay. You got the final girl and the black guy. Who's... That's that's kind of hard because I like I like both characters. Mm-hmm. Um, the final girl I thought was pretty cool in how she did everything, and the black guy there he was smart. Yes. So. <sighs> I don't know, I'm gonna probably have to put the black guy second and then the final girl last because the way how she took care of everything. That's the way I'm gonna run it. Okay, and the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna put. Toby there because mm-hmm. he took all that punishment from the one kid that was always talking shit about him. And one more trick, one more thing back to the leather girl, how she volunteered to walk off with him when the one guy was like, oh, well, uh, why don't you go? The, the, you know, the, the fucking dickhead, the guy was so tough, but he wouldn't go. Right. So he, she was like, yeah, I'll go. And then, you know, he was like, really cool. So that was cool. And I just, I liked his character. Like, yeah, he was a comic relief. He was the nerd. He was smart. Like, he knew how to hotwire a fucking bus. He knew how to drive the bus. And he was just a fun character all around. He was, a, you know, he was, he really cared. He really cared for the people there. Like, he, you know, he wasn't just, I don't know. One problem I had with this is, remember when he's cleaning off his glasses in the bar? Excuse me, in the barn. It's like showing it from a distance. I think you're you're looking from the killer's view. How in the hell does he drop them and lose them like that? She doesn't help them find it till they hear no. a scream. They hear a scream. He, she runs off to the house. I'm like, okay, so you drop your glasses. Like, if you drop them, wouldn't they just drop, like, straight down to the ground? <laughs> you would think they would just drop and boom, you don't have to worry about it anymore. That, that part right there kind of bothered me. I know it wasn't his fault. They, that was the movie. but And then, obviously, my favorite character is the black guy. I wish he would have survived, but, you know. Like I said, with him, gotta love the afro. And then he just, he had his instincts in. I like to call him, you know, the black instincts. When we get scared, we run, and he ran. Or you have something to fight with, and he had a weapon. And he was just like, he was ready. And then he was the one that knew about the house, too. Later in the movie, he kind of mentions it. He's like, oh, this is the Jewett house, blah, blah, blah. This is what happened here, kind of, kind of, sort of. And, like... I kind of wish they were more um, nervous or, like, more on alert after they heard that. Not that they weren't, but they weren't on as alert as I thought they'd be. But, again, overall great, fun, fun film. And uh, with that being said, let's jump into the other part of this segment of the kill-off list. Who would you want to be killed off first to last? Well, I wouldn't want the principal to be killed off. <laughs> I always liked his character. But you had to kill him off. Um, who would I want killed first to last? Wow. <sighs> That's a tough one because you just, you're thinking, would you go right in the order of how they did it in the movie? Or would you reverse a couple of people? I would probably like let the... I'll probably let it go for a while the way they did it, but I would switch out a couple of the deaths where the blonde chick gets killed, the the rich girl. Mm-hmm. Have have the asshole live for a little bit, have him like you know become like involved with more of the group, and uh, then later on he gets killed again because he lets you know he lets someone else get killed by accident. Okay. You know how someone you always had that asshole person where they'll they'll push someone into the killer and they get killed, yes. or it's like oh you fucking dick, and. Uh, or maybe switch it out. 
So maybe have him live for a little bit longer than get killed. Just not the two together. I get that. Now I'll switch out him. I think was it. Did Toby get killed after the those two or before? Um he got killed after those two because remember they ran into the barn where he was still hanging. He was dead at that point. Right. I'll probably switch out Toby and him. And like like send him like he comes running out, then have like have him push Toby in or something, you know, being a do a real dick move and have Toby get killed. They're running together and all of a sudden the killer shows up and then gets the rich kid. Okay. Okay. Um I'll probably have the fat kid live a little bit longer and the one girl that ran to see him gets the pickaxe in the gut. I think that was the bear trap girl because she gets that pickaxe. I'll probably switch her out with the leather chick and, and that's how what I would do the uh, okay the kill list, if, if that makes sense. <laughs> I, I, no, I get what you're saying. I What I would do, I think the first kill off for me would be, um, actually, it wasn't too bad with the good girl dying first, but I think I'd let her survive a little bit longer. And I would let, I would have the, the preppy prissy bitch die first. Not only die first, die in front of her boyfriend. Yeah, so they then, see him throw him, he throws her into the killer so he can get away like that kind of a dick. Ooh, that asshole. would be that would be interesting. But I was even gonna say switch her with Toby, have her hanging on the door. He sees her hanging up there, and that's when he starts kind of changing, trying to be nice after trying to you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So he sees that he runs up, he gets the pickaxe to the gut. Um, and then after that, I wasn't too mad with the kills. Yeah. Like, the the way the black guy got killed, though, like, with his eyeball getting smashed in, I kind of wish that kill was a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, maybe his neck getting, you know, on the shards of glass chopped off down there, like his hair, head severed versus the mm-hmm. eyeball thing, which, because you could survive having one eye. Or, like, say if he did it through his eye and then he, like, smashed his skull down more. That's, like, the only thing I would change about that. I mean, if I could, I'd make him the survivor. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, those rare things do happen. Friday the 13th, Part 5, Breakfast the Legend. <laughs> yep. But, uh, no, it was, like, all the kills, like I said, that was my least favorite kill in the movie. But it wasn't a bad one. It just, if they would have added a little bit more to it, it would have put it over the top. And as far as, like I said, the kill-off list, just those two being killed first, pretty much. Having the girl hanging on the door. He goes to see his girlfriend or whatever. She's hanging on the door. And let's say, okay, you're wondering how she got there. I'm going to put that. I'm going to just say this real quick. Say the same two go off to look for help or whatever. They all meet up in the house. But the girl's dog runs outside and runs to the barn. He, She chases the dog. The boyfriend's in there. Oh, no, fuck that. Fuck that dog. I told her not to bring that stupid dog. Da, 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 da. She doesn't come back for a while. They go out to find her. Sees her hanging on the door. That's when he starts to feel. Sees her hanging on the door, holding her dead dog. I had to do that. <laughs> so then, um, you know, they all go there. They see her, and he runs up there because he's feeling upset and bad. And that's when, boom, stomach done. And all the other, like I said, all the other kills, I kind of I liked. And I'll even say, if um, say you know, I was joking around saying that the black guy survives, but say you do kill him off. I like how it ended with the girl in the ambulance screaming because she sees that the other, the van has the person dead that was driving the van with the supposed dead body. And then she starts screaming and that's how it ends. So now I have to figure out what the hell happens at the after thingy, which you're going to tell me after this episode's over. But, um, I will say, like I said before, I would highly recommend this movie. I'm going to move it up to an 8.5, actually, instead of just an 8. Nice. It's definitely a rewatchable movie, in my opinion. It's better than the last movie, and what about you? I actually had to look something up really quick, too. The Bear Trap Girl was the final girl. I didn't realize it. I just forgot. Yeah. I thought (laughs) she doesn't get killed. (laughs) I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, she does does live. But, yeah, I love the the whole missing reel thing, too. The whole you're watching this film, and all of a sudden, blurp. Like, oh, what happened? And, of course, the killer comes running out. He's touching his head. 
So, of course, someone saved her, mm -hmm. but you don't know. But I thought that was kind of neat how they did that. Kind of a little, ha, figure yeah. it out yourself. Well, no. What, killer, oh. oh, sorry. What happened was um, she even said it that uh, she she almost got killed when she was talking to the other girl, actually. She said she threw she was throwing rocks at him That's right, she and hit rock. him in the head. And which is crazy because he got up from bullets, <laughs> but a rock is what fucking stopped him. So if some if somebody had will break his bones. If somebody had a rock towards the end of that movie, you know, the guy driving the van wouldn't have got killed. But he didn't have a rock. He probably had a gun. <laughs> he fucked up. Yep. The killer look was different. Like he looked like a regular hobo. Mm -hmm. So he kinda of just that's how he probably would live. He would live raggedy clothes. Big beard, mustache, all yeah. that facial hair. Not wearing like a, a different type of mask or anything. Just made him look human, which I thought was pretty cool. Like he was a cannibal. So he was pretty much living off the land, but killing anything that's possible to survive. And he, and he survived that long too, which which is weird. But still, his look was definitely different mm -hmm. for an 80s film. I thought it was pretty neat. Now jumping back to what you're saying about the killer and jumping into... His first kill in the movie that I, I believe they showed, when he killed the homeless guy, mm -hmm. I like that. Like you see the homeless guy sitting there cutting something up, some sort of rodent, I'm guessing, to try to eat. And you kind of see the guy's shadow outside, and he comes around in and slits the guy. I love this kill because he slits the guy's neck with using the guy's own hand to slit his neck. And I'm like, that's fucking awesome. And as he's doing that, or right after he does, he says, "It's my house." I'm like, holy yeah. shit, that was fucking awesome. I really, really <laughs> enjoyed that. And it was, I meant to bring it up earlier, but I forgot till just now. And I'm like, that right there was just like, holy shit, this movie is going to be fun. They started it like that with that nice kill. This movie is really going to be some fun. And it really was. And again, people listening, when you hear this, go out and watch this movie. Watch both movies and compare them if you need to. I... Really, really did like this movie. Like I said, I gave it an 8.5. I gave the other one a 5 or a 5.5. I forgot. Overall, I say they're good watches. Um, As far as like a back-to-back -back watch, watch My Soul to Take first, if you watch them back-to-back -back at all. But um, they're both pretty fun movies overall, in my opinion. My Soul to Take, they could have made a few changes like you heard us discuss earlier in the, ep in the episode. This movie here, um, what the hell is it called again? Lost After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys don't know how many times I had to text that. What movie is it again? Left After Dark? No, Lost <laughs> After Dark. <laughs> but, Lost uh, After Dark? No. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this movie was, to me, for, you know, I don't know what the budget was, but like I said, it's a B-rated movie. This movie was almost perfect to me. I gave it an 8.5. There's only been one 10 on this podcast, and that was by my brother Rob. I believe he gave, gave Jaws a 10. I didn't give any movies a 10 yet. I think my highest rating was a 9. I think it was Jaws, but I don't remember. And uh, so, yes, go out and watch this. If you're a slasher fan, you will enjoy this movie. The story, I mean, the story's not too, too big, but they do have kind of a story to it. So go watch the movie. Give it a rating for whatever. You know, go to the Horror Research 30 page. Tell us what you thought about it. And, um, Matt, you got anything to say? Or? Yeah, it pretty much covers it all. The movie was awesome. Definitely, definitely worth a, a buy. It was just so much fun. And then, okay, we're going to end this in a minute. Um, what do you – do you have any – um? What the hell's the word I'm looking for? Oh, movie. Two or three movies that you would recommend for people to watch besides the ones we just discussed? For, like, a slasher film? Just, it could be slasher, just anything horror in general. Uh, one that definitely comes to mind is called Charlie's Farm. Charlie? I don't know if anybody's ever seen that one before. It's another slasher. It's an Australian slasher. Ooh. Oh, it is freaking awesome. The guy... The director, he's actually directing another film called Boar, which is a giant killer boar film. But Charlie's Farm takes place in the old Outback. It's got Kane Hodder in it. I love it's got Kane. Tara Reid. 
uh, I don't know, I don't like Tara Reid, but um, uh, the guy who plays Ch- Charlie in Charlie's Farm is this gigantic dude. He was a, he used to be a wrestler. Let me look him up really fast. And that's Nathan Jones. Nathan Jones plays uh, Charlie. And of course, they're all they're all coming to visit the so-called urban legend of Charlie's Farm. And it's got Bill Mosley in it. So you got a good cast. Good kills. Um, this dude towers over Kane Hodder. B- built, like, Kane Hodder's a uh, you know, he's built, built and everything, but this mm-hmm. guy just towers over him like, holy fuck. So I definitely recommend Charlie's Farm. Nice. I got two quick ones for you. I didn't watch either one of them, but um, over on Instagram, a horror fan recommended, um, and the fans is Creepy Serial Killer. The Haunted World of El, of Super Beast, The Haunted World of El Super Beasto, and Piranha 3D. Just another fun. Oh, I love Piranha 3. Another fun movie, so definitely check those out. I'm definitely gonna check those out again. The Haunted World of El Beast of Super El Beasto. That's a uh, animated film by uh, Rob Zombie. And, yep. And then the 3D Piranha. So people go check those out. And you got another one? I'll go for an older one called The Psychic uh, Psychic Killer. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome put it out it's from the late 70s pretty much about astral projection where a guy was wrongfully com- wrongfully imprisoned for the death of his mother because we loved his mom he was actually set on bail and he learned how to astral project so he starts to go after all those who wronged him by killing them but no one can leave him because he's at home sitting in a chair and someone else is killing these other people so you kind of it's like a weird maybe it's like a slasher but it's not but definitely check out the psychic killer it's pretty cool from the 70s nice nice and on that note, I mean, you got anything you want to plug, man? Well, if you haven't checked out, please check out my YouTube channel. That's You and Your Horror Movies. Uh, and also, if you listen to my other podcast I'm part of, and that's Cinema Attack, uh, where we talk about all different types of cinema, a lot of horror, but others as well. So if you haven't, please check those out. And thank you. And uh, that Cinema Attack podcast and his YouTube page are both really, really, really fun. So definitely go check those out. And I'm actually going to post, Matt's going to send me the links for both of those, for the podcast and for the pages. I'm going to post those links when our next episode comes out and, you know, keep listening. Matt, thanks again for being on. Thank you for having me, man. It's great. And this is, it seems like it's going to be a, a thing. We're doing this bi-weekly thing. It's, it's going good. It's fun as hell, too, man. Hell yeah, man. This is great. I love it. And, uh... I f- I'll talk to you after this, like after, you know, this recording is done, but I feel maybe we should, these movies that were recommended, maybe we should watch one or two of those and mm-hmm. go from there for the next episode. But uh, everybody, if you're still listening at the end, thank you so much for listening. And uh, like I said, check out his pages. Go to the Horror with Sir Sturdy page on Facebook. And um, also, I'm finally on Instagram. So check me out on Instagram. It's Horror, horror, underscore, with, underscore, sir, underscore, sturdy. That's just how they make you do it. You can't do any spaces or dots or anything, so go check that out. And what's your Instagram name on there, Matt? Yeah, I just joined Instagram, too. It's it's you and your horror movies with no spaces. It's just one long word. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, one long word. You and your horror movies. And on that note, we are about to end it. I just want to see one more thing. Thing real quick if I can find it. I'm trying to think of what to call this episode. Um, I'll figure it out, people. It'll be a surprise. So again, thanks for listening, and as always, I'll 